All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Sorry, I had a little technical difficulty there, but uh, thanks for watching today. Today is uh, day 23 of the 30 Day Profit Challenge. Really, thank you for being here today. Um, I'm your host, Blair DeJong, and I'm really excited to be on this journey with you. You know, we're 23 days into this challenge. I thought at the beginning of this 30 days, it was like, wow, 30 days seems like a long time away, but it's just clipping along day by day. So really appreciate you being here. Really appreciate you joining me. It's good to see uh, all your smiling faces through the computer screen today, even though I can't see you. I can definitely see your names. And uh, thanks for being here today. Thanks for watching. So today we're going to get into sort of the, the first sort of bit of the customer margin tree that we introduced you to yesterday. So for those of you that didn't watch yesterday's episode, please go back and watch it again. Uh, but it's basically, we're talking today about revenue per customer and how revenue per customer is one of those things that it's kind of tied to lifetime value and it really helps you understand how much a customer is worth to you when we're talking about your e-commerce business. So without further ado, let's dive into it. So we are talking, like I said, day 23, revenue per customer. And just to recap from yesterday's session, what we talked a bit about is what we call the customer margin tree. And so on the left-hand side of the equation, we've got our revenue per customer, talking it from your sales revenue. And your revenue per customer is basically if you took your customers over on the right-hand side, revenue per customer over here on the left-hand side, you would multiply the two to get to your sales revenue. So the revenue per customer breaks down further into the number of orders that you have on your particular business. We've got your average order value that breaks down further times your orders per customer to equal your revenue per customer or your lifetime value. And so on the right hand, left hand side of the equation, we've got lifetime value here. Right hand side of the equation, we've got customers. And what customers can be is either be repeat customers or first time customers. They could also be earned customers or paid customers. And there could be a cross section in between. You know, you could be paying for some repeat customers, although you would hope most of them you're earning. Similarly, on the first time customers, they could be paid, or hopefully you could be earning them through word of mouth or direct channels. But ultimately those customers, there are, is a cost involved to acquire those customers. And so that's what we call and define your cost per acquisition. You take your lifetime value minus your cost per acquisition, you get your margin per customer. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we went over yesterday in our customer margin tree. You know, there was some feedback that, you know, maybe a little bit, a little bit, uh, some confusion there. So we're going to try to make this as clear as possible or hopefully clear as mud when we go through this, uh, you know, in, in the next couple of days. But today we're talking about revenue per customer. And so to dive a little bit deeper into it, you know, we're going to focus in on how do you increase your revenue per customer or what we also would refer to as the lifetime value of a customer. And so to do that, there's really two levers that you could pull. It could be your average order value or your orders per customer. And I liken it to think back to, um, there used to be a, an old school or still used today model called the RFM customer value model. For those of you who've been in marketing for a while, you may have seen this before. For those who haven't, really the RFM stands for recency, frequency, and monetary value. And really what it speaks to is on the recency sort of dimension or attribute, it talks a bit about customers that are either first time buying with you or maybe that they've bought from you multiple times. Frequency would be how often they're buying from you. So if they're buying once versus twice versus three times, four times, five times, however many times they've bought from you would be the frequency. And then the monetary value would be how much on a per order basis or on a per, value, per transaction basis have they been purchasing from you? So that's like our average order value. So I've highlighted the frequency of monetary value because this is a model that's been used historically over and over again to score your customers, to really maybe use them as a scoring mechanism to use, or just to understand what the true value of a customer is. And so today we're gonna to use frequency, which is related to orders per customer, and monetary value, which is related to average order value, to showcase how it works. So let's take a look a little bit further. So if we go back to our scenario here, we had previously, on the left-hand side, you can see that if our revenue per customer was $1,000 and you know, we were using the million dollar example and 10,000 customers over to the far right, you know, we had assumed that there was 40,000 orders or basically four orders per customer out of our 10,000 customers over there. And so if we increase that orders per customer by just a simple little 10%, what that's gonna do is increase our orders per customer over here from four to 4.4 
And what that's gonna do is lift our orders up by 40,000 to 44,000 or increase it another 10%. And if we held that same 10,000 customers constant over on the far right that we had shown in our other margin tree, that means we're gonna increase our revenue per customer by another 10% or $1,100. So by just simply increasing that frequency of orders per customer and going from four to 4.4, you can start increasing that value of your customer or increasing the lifetime value on the bottom. Another way to look at this is if you looked at average order value, so the monetary value, obviously if you, again, you do the same sort of math, let's say we're using uh, average order value of $250 and we increase that by 10%, that would go from 250 up to 275. And with that 275, again, if we hold everything else constant, that's going to generate a higher revenue per customer of $1,100 or another 10%. So you can imagine now, as you know, I like to do the math and showcase kind of bundling things together. So if we start looking at the exponential value, you can see here, if we take both average order value and orders per customer and increase them both by 10%, so we increase our average order value by 275 and we increase the orders per customer to 4.4, what you're gonna see here is not only do we increase the orders to 44,000, we're also increasing the orders per customer and average order value to generate more revenue per customer at 21% increase or basically $1,210. So what that's doing is it's basically exponentially starting to compound each other. And if we were looking at the sort of recency factor, you know, that's maybe not a, a part that plays into here, but we've got the F and we've got the M covered here in terms of increasing your revenue per customer. So definitely some, a little bit of math involved sort of thing, but what you can see here is by just increasing the value that we've looked at on the order side of the equation, we talked about that in sort of the order margin tree um, and product margin tree where we looked at, you know, if you increased your average order value by increasing price or perhaps by adding more products to the basket or perhaps uh, looking at, you know, are there other products and services that you can sell to that customer? that's going to increase your average order value. Similarly, on the orders per customer side of the equation, maybe it's just that extra reach out to a customer and say, hey, we noticed you haven't bought from us in a while. Or, hey, you know, we've got this other new product available for us. Would you be interested? You know, there's simple little tricks and simple little ways that you can increase that orders per customer as well as increase the average order value that's going to compound itself and increase your average revenue per customer. So I hope that you found that useful today. Um, today, you know, was a, was a quick lesson on revenue per customer. Tomorrow, we're going to get into a bit more about recency and understanding a bit more about customers and understanding the new customers versus repeat customers. And then the next lesson after that, what we'll do is we'll get into more about paid versus organic. And I'll introduce you to a few of the marketing channels that you can use, both from the paid advertising side of the equation, but also from the earned side of the equation that can help generate more new or repeat customers for you for your e-commerce business. So again, thanks for watching today. Really appreciate you being here. And again, I ask you to be present, go and connect with others and make an impact in someone's life today. So with that, I'll thank you for watching today and uh, pause the recording and take any questions that anyone might have.